Having looked at the main liver functions as well as some of the main uh, clinical disease manifestations, uh, we're going to now focus on some of the conditions that affect the liver. So how we're going to organize this is by etiological categories and we're going to use this uh, mnemonic vitamin uh, or rather vitamin. So let's start off with the V and uh, V as you know stands for vascular conditions one of which is chronic venous congestion. So this is actually a systemic disease um, seen in congestive cardiac failure. And uh, this is something that uh, gives rise to lots of uh, back damming of blood from the venous systemic return into the right heart, giving rise to chronic venous congestion. So microscopically, there can be some damage to the hepatocytes, particularly in the centrilobular regions. Um, there can also be specific vascular diseases involving the liver, such as venal occlusive disease, um, as well as portal hypertension, which is a very important uh, aspect that is seen in cirrhosis. Now, I stands for infection, and uh, there is a whole range of infections, and we must always remember the hepatotropic viruses, uh, hepatitis A to E, uh, are the most well-known ones, and these can give rise to both acute as well as chronic hepatitis. Um, some of the viruses more prone to acute, such as hepatitis A, uh, some of them more prone to chronic uh, hepatitis with a carrier state, such as Hep B and Hep C. And again, remember that in a subset of acute hepatitis, there can be fulminant hepatitis, particularly seen in hepatitis A. Again, also important to remember that some of these chronic uh, hepatitic states can lead eventually to cirrhosis and even to hepatocellular carcinoma. So, of course, there can be other groups of organisms other than viruses that affect the liver. Uh, there can be parasites and helminths, uh, for example. Cholangiocarcinoma is uh, a complication, it's a known complication of uh, infection by liver flukes and this occurs in parts, some parts of Thailand. Also, there can be other infections uh, such as hydatidsis in the liver, which you would have learned about in your microbiology lessons. Now, of course, there can also be bacterial infections giving rise to abscess uh, and also uh, fungal infections. Uh, T stands for toxic. So uh, drugs, uh, very, very important toxin, alcohol, um, over consumption of alcohol, chronic over consumption can give rise to a host of liver diseases, including steatohepatitis, steatosis. Steatohepatitis is more like a um, more advanced stage of steatosis where there is both fatty change as well as damage to liver cells. Uh, it can give rise to alcoholic hepatitis and also eventually cirrhosis and even uh, hepatocellular carcinoma. So actually the pattern of liver damage can be similar in other types of drugs. There can be fatty liver or fatty change and uh, that fatty change accompanied by hepatocellular damage due to hepatitis. There can be just uh, some type of an acute hepatitis or even eventually uh, long-standing hepatocellular damage leading to cirrhosis. Interestingly, uh, drugs can also sometimes cause neoplasms and um, contraceptive drugs or anabolic steroids are known to be associated with the formation of hepatocellular adenoma, which is a benign uh, liver tumour. Uh, still on the topic of uh, toxic causes of liver disease and what I have not written here, uh, for example, thorough trust administration for imaging of the liver, this can be associated with uh, liver tumours. As you can see here in the slide taken from your lecture notes, uh, thorough trust can be associated with cholangiocarcinoma or even angiosarcoma. Now let's move on to A, which stands for autoimmune disease. And um, some of the biliary diseases such as primary sclerosing cholangitis and primary biliary cholangitis, this is previously known as primary biliary cirrhosis. These are actually autoimmune in terms of etiology and can give rise to uh, eventually a biliary pattern of cirrhosis. Um, there can also be autoimmune hepatitis where the liver cells are damaged um, by autoimmune reactions and th these are often associated with the presence of uh, serum anti uh, autoantibodies. Now, uh, M stands for metabolic and um, this would include fairly common conditions like NAFLD, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. These can be sometimes seen in obese patients or patients with diabetes and uh, there is 
damage to the hepatocytes, which is progressive, which can eventually actually lead to cirrhosis. Uh, other examples of metabolic diseases, and these all have genetic uh, causes, so these are often congenital. Uh, copper metabolism abnormality in Wilson's disease, hemochromatosis, and alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, and all of these can also eventually end up in cirrhosis. Now, um, N is a very big category, and this stands for neoplasms, of course. So it's always important to note that the liver is a common catchment site for secondary tumours or metastases, especially from the GI tract, because if you look at the drainage or the venous drainage of the GI tract uh, through the portal system, it often goes into the liver. So this catches the colorectal carcinoma mets quite often. Uh, in terms of primary neoplasms, we have some of the malignant neoplasms here, hepatocellular carcinoma and cholangiocarcinoma. These are the two major categories uh, coming from the epithelial cells because remember the liver has got two main epithelial cell components, the hepatocytes and the bile duct cells. So hepatocellular carcinoma... Uh, some of the predisposing conditions that can lead to it include cirrhosis, um, alcoholic liver disease, chronic infection with hepatitis B or hepatitis C virus, some of the metabolic diseases, and also some of the uh, toxins which can be ingested externally, uh, such as aflatoxins, and this was covered in the chapter on neoplasm in terms of pathogenesis of uh, malignant transformation. Now, of course, we also mustn't leave out the benign neoplasms. Uh, the benign primary hepatocellular neoplasm is known as the hepatocellular adenoma. And this has been linked, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, under drugs. This has been linked with the ingestion of anabolic steroids and sometimes also even oral contraceptives. <clears throat> Another important and uh, fairly common benign neoplasm in the liver, which does not arise from the hepatocytes, is a hemangioma. This, of course, is a blood vessel tumour and it's a benign tumour. So um, do try to correlate uh, some of the major conditions mentioned here under the various etiologic categories to the specific clinical manifestations. And just looking at this, you can see that there's a lot of overlap. One condition can cause multiple clinical manifestations. But it is important to note uh, that right at the end point, uh, cirrhosis is a common end stage of many of the chronic liver diseases. And also uh, there are many pathways that can give rise to hepatocellular carcinoma.